Hello, this is Eliseo Rodriguez, and this is the Kingdom of God and Christ. Um, so what we're going to do is we're continuing our videos. We talked about homoousius in one video about how the word was never used for the church until the Council of Nicaea. Then we talked about uh, Raymond Brown and his understanding that the early church, the first century church, did not have uh, Trinitarianism and that the New Testament doesn't have any uh, scripture that proves Trinitarianism and that um, it's a later development revelation that is given to the church. Now we're going to Clark Carlton, um, Proverbs uh, 8.22. Uh, it says, Arius was a presbyter of the Church of Alexandria in the 4th century, which is true. The controversy began with his interpretation of Proverbs 8.22, where Solomon speaks of wisdom. It says, The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Everyone, both, or, uh, both Orthodox and Arian, which I think it should say Athanasian and Orthodox, but whatever, understood wisdom to be Christ. So first of all, Proverbs 8.22 is speaking about Jesus, even though we have no New Testament understanding about, uh, or someone using Proverbs uh, 8.22 about to, to, to describe Jesus in the New Testament. It is so prevalent in the church um, that everyone understood that Proverbs 8.22 is about Jesus. So, you need to get over that hump. In the Council of Nicaea, everybody understood Proverbs 8.22 to be about Christ. They just argued about what it meant. Okay? So, the question was, what does this verse mean? Arius' answer was that the Logos is a creature, albeit the highest, noblest, and best of creatures. Those who sought to uphold the Orthodox doctrine that Christ is uncreated is the uncreated Son of God had to deal with Arius's interpretation of Proverbs. St. Hilary of uh, Poitiers wrote that this passage was the greatest billow in the storm they raise, the, the big wave of the world whirling tempest. So, to begin with, the whole church understood that Proverbs 8.22 was about Christ. And because it says that Jesus that, that the Lord created Jesus. when Because that verse says the Lord created Jesus at the beginning of his work, because the scripture says that, and because Trinitarians had long, for a long time, or had already accepted this verse and this section of uh, scripture about Jesus, they decided, you know what? We're just going to have to fight because this is one of Arius's most strongest scriptures against the doctrine of the Trinity. So it's no surprise today that the Proverbs 8.22 largely is not utilized by the Trinitarianism. Although they do have to acknowledge that it is about Jesus, they do whatever they can to make sure that the words don't say the Lord created me, that Yahweh created Jesus. Because it's contrary to the doctrine of the Trinity, but the words are there and the whole church understood it. Nowadays, when you say Proverbs 8.22 is talking about Jesus, and they see how Arian it is, how much it talks about Jesus being created, the, it just throws them off the deep end. And they hate it. And they say, that's not even, that's not even about Jesus. We have lost today the understanding that Proverbs 8.22 is about Jesus. Why? Because it is so harmful to the doctrine of the Trinity that they have nearly made the entire church forget that it's about Jesus. But when Arians, or people who understand the truth of the gospel, bring this up, the first argument is, that's not even about Jesus. That's about wisdom. And they go off into this crazy argument, but when you bring up the fact that the entire church of the Council of Nicaea agreed that Proverbs 8.22 was about Jesus, they don't believe you. So, the Trinitarian Church has been successful in changing and um, 
hiding the fact that this is truth um, and and this is what's been happening. So, um, and and another thing where it says that that the logos is a creature, albeit the highest, noblest, and best of creatures. You know, in um, there's a, a verse in the Bible about Jesus saying, you know, don't you know, don't be so. You know, don't say that I'm, you know, we're children of Abraham because God can raise these stones to be children of Abraham. And what I understand from that is that Jesus is saying God can make these stones into biologically, by their DNA, formed into children of Abraham, like literally, not just spiritually, but that God can make those stones into beings who are Literally, if you check the DNA, if you check everything, children of Abraham, okay? That's how awesome our God is, that he can create something to be an actual child of someone else who didn't have to give DNA because God knows the DNA, God knows all of it. And he can put a a being together and it be literally a child of this person Although there was no involvement of that other person. God can do that. So when God created his own son, he doesn't have to have material from himself to create his own son. So those things have to be... uh, So not just a creature, but a son. Um, A being that is born to be literally the son of God. And we mean sharing form, sharing uh, kind of essence, not the very same essence, but sharing kind of essence, having, if you can use the word, the DNA of God in him, he would have the same, whatever that is. If God were to have what we understand is like DNA, Jesus would have the same DNA as the Father when he was created at the beginning before all of the things were created. Okay? That's how much of a son and how literally Jesus is the son of God. But he didn't have to, God didn't have to take out of himself to make his son, is the point. So those, um, so I think he doesn't understand Arianism too, too well here, but, or Arias. But those who sought to uphold the orthodox doctrine that Christ is the uncreated son of God had to deal with Arius' interpretation. Uh, we read that. The Orthodox counter that the passage refers to the humanity of Christ, not to his divinity. Here we have two groups that recognize the same scriptures and agreed that the verse in question refers to Christ, yet they arrived at diametrically opposed interpretations. Now there is no question that both parties considered their positions self-evident. Everyone's interpretation of the Bible seems self-evident to himself. That does not make it self-evident to others, however. The question remains, therefore, how did they decide which interpretation is correct? This is Clark Carlton, um, and he's asking a good question. So let's look at, for a moment, let's look at Proverbs chapter 8, and let's see what we find out. What are we going to learn? Let me see here. Let me put this up here. So... Proverbs 8.22. Let's see if I can highlight this. That's not much of a highlight there. Okay. I'm not good at that. Okay, so it says... Um, The Lord possessed me in the beginning, possessed, uh, acquired, to get, acquire, create, buy, possess. The Lord created, acquired me, attained me, that kind of stuff, in the beginning of his way. I'm sorry, let me get a different version that works on the Aryan side. Um, Let's see here. The Lord made me at the start of his way, the first of his works in the past. From eternal days I was given my place, from birth of time, before the earth was. So, let's remember what Clark Carlton was saying, that 
the Trinitarians were saying that they were that when the word when this scripture talks about the Lord made me at the beginning of his way, at the start of his way, when it says that the Lord created Jesus, um, that they were talking about it as far as when he created him as a human. Now, if we look at this scripture, it shows that that is absolutely untrue, that he was created before. So let's look at how wrong these Trinitarians were. Um, so the Lord made me the start of his way, the first of his works in the past. In the past. Now, if we use hermeneutics and find out when this was written, past would be before when it was written. So in the past, the first of his works in the past, that does not mean after Mary and the whole earth was created. So temporarily, talking about during a, chronologically, this is not when Jesus when when Jesus was born through Mary. It cannot be. It's talking about the first of his works in the past, not after a couple of things have been made and Mary, my mom. It's not that that it's talking about. Then it says, um, from the eternal days I was given my place from the birth of time. So from before time began, from the birth of time, from I mean, there was time for a long time before Mary came around, before the earth was. Mary was standing on earth. She was actually made, Adam was made out of the dust of the earth. And so was Eve. And then you have all those years and then you have Mary. So it, this is chronologically not talking about when he was a man. The Lord may be the beginning of his way, uh, at the start of his way, the first of his works in the past. The, from eternal days I was given my place. In, in other words, before time began. From the birth of time, it says, to reiterate that. Before the earth was. That's not that's not according to when they're saying. When there was no deep. The deep is in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. I was given my birth. When there were no fountains flowing with water. That's way before Mary. Before the mountains were put in their place. Before the hills was my birth. It's telling you chronologically, not when Jesus was born through Mary. When he had not made the earth or the fields or the dust of the earth, I mean of the dust of the world, we're getting into specifics here. Before the dust of the earth, before the dust of the world, before the time, before time, before the earth, before the deep. Um, when he made the heavens, I was there. That's not, that's not Mary. You know what I mean? That's not when Mary. I mean, if you go on, it just moves, moves. It just keeps doing it. When he he put the arch over the surface of the deep, when he made a strong skies overhead, when the fountains were fixed. I mean, all of this is saying that's not when Mary was born. You know, not even when Mary was born. It's not talking about that. So we come back here, and it says. The Orthodox, which is the Trinitarians, supposedly the Orthodox, which I think the Arians should be called Orthodox, but that's my own opinion. The Orthodox, the Trinitarians, countered that the passage refers to the humanity of Christ, not to his divinity. Here we have two groups. So, see that? The passage refers to the humanity of Christ, not to his divinity. Jesus was not a human until after Mary was born. You know what I mean? So, the argument falls flat on his face. So we'll move on from here um, into into other things, but something to look at about Proverbs 8.22 and the existence. The whole church understood that this verse was these verses were about Jesus and the Arians had an advantage with this scripture and which is why most Trinitarians do not understand that this is about Jesus. And when you tell them about it, they'll give you the longest arguments on planet Earth about it, but they don't even know church history, that they shouldn't try to disprove it. It's just a difficulty for them. And this is a verse that lends credence to the doctrine of what is called now Arianism, which is Orthodox Christian doctrine. So... I'm going to leave it there.